This thing is impossible to turn over. <laughs> Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Today I'm going to be discussing what size grip you should be playing. Every golfer's hand size is completely different, so it's important that every golfer gets fitted for the right grip size. There has been some tendencies that have been found. Typically, if a player is playing with a grip that's a little bit too small for them, they may pull it or hook some shots. At the other end of the spectrum, if the grip's a little too large, they may push the ball a little to the right, leave that club face a little bit open. So we're going to explore some data with regards to me testing a club that has a larger grip and a smaller grip and just seeing the differences in shot shape. But firstly, I'm gonna to touch on what is very, very important with regards to a grip fitting. There are four ways that I like to fit someone for the right grip. The first way I like to use is a measurement. So a hand measurement from their crease to the end of their finger and also their finger size. I think Ping does a great job with their fitting chart to help us as club fitters to help fit and explain what size grip someone should be using. The second option I like to use, I always like to discuss their left hand, a player's left hand and see how they're gripping the club. If a player's left hand is digging in too much, that tells me that this grip may be a little bit on the small side. At the other end of the spectrum, the grip's a little too big and you see a gap on their left hand, that tells me that grip may be a little bit on the large side. Third way I like to use with regards to measurement is comparing glove size. If someone has an extra large glove, we're probably not gonna be using a standard size grip. We're probably gonna want a little larger grip. Um, if someone has a small hand, a very, very, very small hand and, and uses a very, very small glove, they're probably not going to need a large grip either. Um, and then finally, it's important to focus on swing tendencies. If a player a lot of the times hooks the ball a lot or slices the ball a lot, that's a great way to maybe pay attention to the size of the grip they're playing and how much they're leaving that club face open or closing coming through. So these are four different ways that I like to use in club fitting. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. We've got some great content coming your way. Right now I'm gonna get after hitting some shots of different grip sizes and take a look at the data. So first I'm gonna begin the testing with a standard size grip. I've always played a standard size grip with my current clubs. So this was a fun experiment. I hit 15 shots. So I hit three shots with a standard size grip, undersized grip, mid-sized grip, oversized grip, and I've added in something for fun, the jumbo max, so a very, very large grip. So first taking a look at club speed. Really interesting, very, very similar with the first four. We'll notice the undersized grip 89.3 miles an hour with club speed. So the smallest grip generated the most club speed, which is very, very interesting. The largest grip was only 84.7, so it was almost five miles an hour less than the undersized grip. So that just shows how much harder it is for me to get that club face to turn through. When I'm getting that club face to turn through better, I'm gonna generate a little bit more speed. 
Um, you also will notice with regards to ball speed as well, the lowest amount of ball speed was with the Jumbo Max grip. Then it was the oversized grip, so the two largest ones had the least amount of ball speed. The undersized grip had the highest amount of ball speed. And then the midsize and standard grip were kind of right in the middle there as well. So takeaway there is if you need to generate maybe a little more speed, a little smaller grip is going to help generate a little bit more speed there as well. Um, interesting, when I left the face open with the Jumbo Max, the spin rate was very, very high. When the spin rate with all the others were very low, 6,000, the Jumbo Max was 7,300. So higher, more spinny shot with the larger grip. Um, taking a look here at launch angle, we can see the launch angle was 20 degrees with the Jumbo Max. Uh, I normally launch it around about 17 degrees. You can see the standard grip, 17.3. Um, and then about the same with those three. And then the Jumbo Max kind of went up a little bit higher with regards to launch angle. Uh, carry distance, I carry my 7-iron about 180, so my standard grip was 181.3. The undersized grip carried the furthest, 184, and the oversized grip was, and the Jumbo Max didn't go out, quite go as far. If we take a look over here on the right, I'm interested to take a look at face angle. So face angle, standard grip. Ideally, we want to have our face angle nice and square at impact. So with a standard grip, which is what I play, my face angle was 0.3. So it was the squarest face angle out of the all. The smaller undersized grip, I was actually had the club face closed coming through, negative 1.3. Oversized grip, positive 2.2. And then the jumbo max was 6.4 degrees open. So it just didn't go quite as far because it had a lot more curve to the right with the uh, Jumbo Max grip there too. Uh, I like to play a little bit of a draw. So the standard size grip, which I play, had 12 feet of curve to the left. That's pretty standard for what I play with a 7 iron. The undersized grip had 33 feet more curve, so it curved a little bit more to the left. mid size grip was ever so slight little fade, four feet of curve to the right, so that helped maybe limit my club face to rotation a little bit. And then as the grip got larger, the curve also got a little bit larger there as well. So really kind of interesting to take a look at kind of those, the, the data to see how it influenced ball speed, how it influenced my club face. If we take a look at the right here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna expand the dispersion pattern. Really, really interesting. This is a good way to dissect how the shots were influenced. You can see over here on the left, the undersized grip. That's that yellow circle. Yellow circle was the furthest to the left. The standard grip, right in the middle. It's right where I'd want to be. Standard grip, there's a reason why I play a standard size grip, because it flew the straightest. The mid-sized grip was starting to sneak just a little bit to the right. So that's that purple circle. And then the oversized grip started sneaking a little bit to the right. Not only was it a little to the right, but it was starting to go a little bit shorter. So that's because I wasn't generating as much ball speed because the face was staying a little more open. And then this Jumbo Max grip, quite extreme, um, very, very extreme. Now, there are players that may benefit from playing a Jumbo Max grip. It's designed for maybe players that have arthritis in their hands may feel like they have better control with their hands with a much larger larger grip. But generally speaking, a smaller grip is going to generate a little bit more curve to the left, where a larger grip is going to generate a lot more curve to the right. So grip size is very important. It influences the direction the ball goes. It influences your comfort level and it influences confidence on the golf course. So it's very important to come into second swing to discuss what size grip you should play with a club fitter.